studio for tonight's health segment, Caroline Meehan. She is a dietitian and nutritionist with University of Maryland Medical Center. Caroline, it's a pleasure to welcome you here to our studio. Thank you, it's great to be here. So you're the bearer of all bad news. I mean, <laughs> is it true that people can gain as much as 10 pounds from Thanksgiving to New Year's Day? Yeah, unfortunately this time of year there is a lot more sweets around, heavier foods. We see a lot more heavy cream and butter and sugar. So it, it can happen. So what is it about this time of year that makes us overindulge, eat a little extra pie more than we should? So I think it's a couple things. We certainly have more of the heavy foods around, but I think people also might not be getting as much activity. They're not sleeping as much. Stress can increase this time of year. And then often during the holidays, we see people kind of lose track of their consistent schedule. So the meal patterns might be off, people are skipping meals, saving their calories for the end of the day, but really we shouldn't be doing that. We should be living a consistent meal pattern and sleep schedule as often as we can throughout the week. So is there such a thing as a food hangover? So that, that can happen if we do overindulge um, for that celebratory meal, and often it has to do with a lot of added sugar. I mean, there are times when I just, I wake up in the morning and I'm like, I mean, not even having a glass of wine will make me feel as bad as like the three extra pieces of cake I had. Yeah. But so that is something normal that we experience. Yeah, <laughs> it can happen. And what I would recommend is going for a walk. That'll help improve blood sugar a bit and hopefully help people feel better. So is it the excessive sugar? I mean, how do you avoid it when it's everywhere during the holidays? So I recommend building a balanced plate. And I think that'll help prevent overeating. So that means including a little bit of protein, and some fiber and then definitely getting those vegetables on your plate and when you're and when you're eating your meals making sure you're having water with your meal and not drinking some type of sugary beverage like soda or tea or juice and then if you're having a piece of pie go for it and just stick to one and know it'll be there maybe the next day if you want to slice again so are there any particular foods that you say we should just all out avoid um sugar obviously in moderation yeah. but I mean the fried stuff too many carbs I feel like I'm a carb girl so I, I really think <laughs> moderation is key okay. and if you are gonna have something that's maybe on the heavier side it's not the healthiest thing in the world be sure again you're getting those vegetables on your plate you're choosing a little bit of lean protein and then with your starch you're keeping it to about a quarter of your plate or the size of a fist and really just practicing good portion control with those heavier types of starch foods the portion control, the other, the other tip that I learned was to try to fill your place. You mentioned this a little veggies. Yeah. Yes. And everything that's like mostly green and not. Yeah, we want lots of color not, not on the good plate. tasting. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, that's helpful. Do you get full? Are you satiated if you eat that? And then maybe you'd be less yes. inclined? Okay. Yeah, Talk so we want to try to start with the vegetables because veggies and fruits give us good fiber and fiber keeps us full. So the more fiber in our diet, the more likely we're going to feel satisfied. Protein also helps us keep satisfied. So that's things like chicken and fish, eggs, beans. And then if we go towards the starch last, we tend to not eat as much as if we go for it first. So I, you mentioned earlier about not skipping a meal. Why is that so bad during the holiday yeah. season? Like I find myself, okay, I won't have lunch because I'm going to the holiday party. Yeah. So that tends to lead to overeating later on in the day. <laughs> oh, okay, there you go. Yeah, that's the, the big no-no. So we definitely recommend still having breakfast and lunch, maybe even a couple snacks, practicing good hydration during the day, getting a walk-in, and then going to that meal and just acting like it's an, an, any other meal. And again, practicing good portion control and enjoying yourself. What about the idea of going back for seconds? perhaps thirds, all of that. I mean, we all yeah. know it's not what you should be doing, but how, how bad is that for us to do during this time of year? So if you are gonna go back for seconds, I recommend going back for the veggies or maybe some fruit. And you know, again, if you really want that slice of pie, a second slice, if you have it, try to go for a walk after dinner and you'll probably feel a little bit better. What about some other tips? Because um, oftentimes I'll find myself kind of eating what I have and then waiting. Do you feel a little more fuller if yeah. you talk to me about that? Yes, that's a, a really good point. Mindful eating is super important. So sit down at the table when you're eating your meals, making sure you're taking your time. Ideally, we want to give ourselves about 20 minutes for meal times. And then again, um, taking it slow. So just sitting down, relaxing, maybe lighting a candle, uh, having friends and family over and that, you'll probably slow down a bit and feel more satisfied. So with the New Year's right around the corner, obviously that's the big thing for everybody to lose the 10 pounds they gained over the holidays, right? But you do want to be more physically fit, health and wealth, we talked about that. Anything we should do forward thinking about the New Year's? 
about keeping ourselves yeah. together? So this time of year, definitely want to make small goals. So they should be small and realistic. Nothing too lofty or big. Ta kind of take it one step at a time. So maybe creating maybe one to two goals to work on. And again, making them specific. So that could mean I'm going to walk 15 minutes a day, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday during my lunch break. Or on Saturday and Sunday, I'm going to make sure I cook a healthy meal for myself. Try to make your goals that are centered around lifestyle versus weight. And I think that is a really good way to go about it. So what happens if we sort of get stuck in a rut? You know, we, we're trying to do these things and then we, you know, fall back in very regressive nature of like, yeah. gotta have those salt and vinegar, pota vinegar potato chips. Like, what do you right. do at that point? So one thing to keep in mind is, you know, that can happen. It's all normal and part of the process of making changes. But reach out for help. There's so many so many supportive communities out there that can help you, whether it's your healthcare team or a friend or a family member that's also trying to make changes. Having a buddy alongside when you're making lifestyle changes can really help just make this a lot more fun and easy. The accountability factor. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that does make a difference. Um, so do you see any food trends in 2019, things that we might uh, be eating more of or seeing more on the grocery store yeah. shelves? So I think one thing that I have noticed, the Nutrition Facts label now has added sugar on the, the, the label. So I think food companies will start to rebrand their products to have less sugar, which is great. I also think there's a big push towards more sustainable and environmentally friendly packaging and products in the supermarket. So we might see more farm to table products, more local. And third, I, th I think we'll see a mix of all different types of plant-based proteins and alternative proteins that are coming onto the market. And I think this goes hand in hand with trying to make more environmentally friendly products available to customers. Did we talk in the, we talked in the green room about yeah. food being produced in labs. Yes. What, what, what's that about again? So that is one thing that I have seen in the media, lab-based protein and meat. And um, who knows if we'll see this in 2019, but it, it could be out there. Another thing I've seen is bug and insect-based protein powders. So that could be another exotic kind of weird food trend we, we will see. But <laughs> more, yeah, stay tuned. Stay tuned on that one. Yeah. So when your clients come to you, what exactly, is it a wide range of issues that they're trying to resolve um, to use a, a dietitian? Yeah, so I, I see uh, patients that are coming for diabetes or weight management, heart disease, and we primarily work on making small changes in the right direction, making lifestyle changes, focusing on long-term, no 21-day fixes or 30-day changes. It's all sustainable lifestyle changes. Well, since you brought that up, let's let's cover that. Uh, there's a lot of like lose weight, quick, fast programs yeah. that are going on. You said those are really the worst that you can do, mainly because why? Yes, yeah, so we normally don't recommend that. They tend to be very restrictive. And we find that people, if they do embark on these restrictive diets, they tend to regain the weight or maybe gain more back. Um, and it doesn't set the tone for long-term sustainable lifestyle changes. When we're thinking about diets and dieting, we really need to stick to a plan that we're going to stick to for our entire life. And it, it shouldn't be just kind of a quick thing and then we go back to our old ways. And you and I were talking about making adjustments along the way, like yeah. I crave Diet Coke, but it's really the carbonation from the Diet Coke. Yes. So yeah. a good alternative yeah, is the, the flavored sparkling water. A sparkling water is a really good alternative. So you have yeah. to find those kinds of options exactly. for you. Yeah. Um, what do you do during the holiday season to make sure you don't <laughs> overindulge? Uh, so I keep a consistent meal pattern. I think that, again, is super, super important. So making sure you're having breakfast and lunch and maybe a couple snacks and then enjoying your, your dinner meal. Uh, activity is very important. So getting in walks and um, maybe getting some fresh air is a really good way to go about it. Uh, sleeping well and stress management. So it's really multifactorial, just taking a, a little bit of everything and working on it. And know that we're all a work in progress. So it, you know, if I slip up, that's all normal and 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 part of it. We've only got a minute or so left. I want to ask you a little bit more about the carb thing because I am yeah, curious sure. about that. You hear all the time about stay away from anything white. How bad is that? Yeah, so to, to be eating bread and pasta and rice. Right. Is that as bad as they're saying? It, it's all about the type of carbohydrate. So when it comes to the white grains, as long as we're primarily doing those in moderation and more so choosing the whole grains. So those are our brown grains, like whole wheat pasta, whole wheat bread, brown rice, and oatmeal. If we're choosing those, it's, it's much, much better. More fiber, a little bit more protein, and more heart health benefit.
the last 30 seconds, anything that you would recommend? I mean, if it's cold outside, do some things in the house to compensate for that yeah. bag of chips you just ate. Yeah. <laughs> Right? Yeah, cl cleaning, dancing, um, whatever it might be in the house, you could you could do something like that. But um, yeah, staying active, it's, it's not too bad out. I think getting some fresh air is still realistic. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. All right, Caroline Meehan, it was a pleasure to speak Thank with you. you. Thank you so much for here. your time. And I'm going to have to think twice now <laughs> when I see that pumpkin pie, or you know what it is for me? It's actually, it's a red velvet cake. That happens to be the thing that I can never say no to. But thank you very much. Thank we you. Your health segments are a co-production of Maryland Public Television and the University of Maryland Medical System.